If you're looking to make the background of an image transparent in GIMP, you're in the right place. I'm going to show you all the ways that you can do so with a bunch of different types of images. So stick close and let's get into it. So the first method we're going to use is called the fuzzy layer. And the fuzzy layer is the tool up on the top left hand side that looks like a magic wand. So you're going to select this and now you're going to select your background. Now this does work best if you have a white background or a background with um, a very different contrast to your image that you want to have remaining or your foreground. So once you've selected that, you are going to hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now, if you want to make this background transparent, we're going to go and make sure that this is selected and go to the right hand side. And over here, you're going to add an alpha channel. OK, and once you add an alpha channel, you will see that you can make that background transparent. The next way we are going to remove the background and make it transparent is by using the color selector. Now, the color selector is very simple. This is best if you're wanting to make the background transparent on a vector. You can see that there's quite a high difference in contrast and color here, so there's not much blending. The tool that we're looking for is up on the top left hand side. If you can't find any of these tools here, you can go up to tool and you can go to selection tools and here you can go and look for the by color select. OK, and that's what the icon looks like. Now, once you've selected that, you can go on and select your background. So I've done so. And what we're going to do again, make sure you're going to right click over here and make sure that there is an alpha channel. And you're going to hit delete. And you will see your background will be removed and it'll be transparent. Now, we do have another way of doing this. This is by paths and this is more for sort of complex images where there's a lot of contrast there's a lot of color going on just like this example that i'm using right over here so we're going to come up to the left hand side again and you can see that there's a tool called paths okay now once you select this you're going to go you can use control and your mouse wheel and you can zoom in on particular areas of your image now this is really great for very specific shapes and spaces that you're going to be doing. And what you will do now is click down on a part of your image that you would like to start selecting. And as you just click down on it, right, you will see if you click again, you are going to start tracing the area that you would like to make a selection of and ultimately remove. So we're going to go around here and this will take some time, but it is by far the most accurate way of removing a background and making it transparent. If you're unhappy with some of the points, you can actually click down and drag them into place just like this. Or like on this corner. And once you're done, you can just hit the enter key and it will make a selection of that area. Now, let's consider that this is the background and this is what we've selected. We're gonna go up to the left-hand side and we're gonna look into our menu. We wanna look for select and here we wanna click on invert. Now this will invert the selection and you're gonna hit delete and you will see that this area has been deleted. Again, you wanna make sure that you're right clicking here and adding that alpha channel and you will find transparent background with your selection. The next method we're going to have a look at is a little bit more complex, but it does work well when you're looking at images like this, where there's strands of hair on the edges and it would be very difficult to manually mask or select these areas. So the first thing you're going to do is select your image and we want to create a duplicate so once it's selected you can go up to select on the top over here you can go up to edit at the top over here and we are going to click on copy and then we are going to click again on edit and we are going to click on paste now as you can see over here 
you'll have your selection and on the bottom there's a little green icon that you can click down on and it will paste your duplicate now having your duplicate selected you want to go up to the top again on your menu and you want to go and have a look for color and in color you're going to look for saturation and you're going to look for the scale and you want to bring the scale all the way down so that you have essentially a black and white image with no saturation you're going to go into colors again and you're going to look for the curves icon and here you can manually adjust the icon on the bottom and the top the dials so that your image is mostly black in the foreground and white in the background we can go ahead and click on ok and again i want to just stress that this is quite an advanced method so it takes a bit of getting used to and there's a lot of detail involved in it so practice will make you better at this method from here you want to go up to your toolbar again and you want to look for colors and here you want to look for invert this will make your image look as such we want to go now and up on the left hand side into edit and here we want to click on copy visible now once this has been done you can now turn off the visibility of this image so we are going to do so and this is now our original image we're going to go to the right hand side right click on our original image and here we want to add a layer mask all right the next thing here is to click on add we want to make sure that the um, initialized layer mask is to a white full opacity and we're going to click on add now making sure again that this is selected from here you're going to go up to your toolbar again you're going to click on edit and we're going to click on paste and you will notice that your background has become transparent on the bottom right you will see a little icon that looks like an anchor it is to anchor your floating layer and you will do so now as you can see when i mentioned earlier on that this is a bit more of an advanced technique which requires a little bit more practice to get it right you can now go over to the left hand side and you can select the paintbrush tool you can now select your colors and we want this one to be black and we want this one to be white and let's say OK. And from here, we can begin brushing our image to make sure that the foreground stands out and we are restoring the picture to the foreground while the background is transparent. Now, this is not perfect, but as I mentioned, the more you practice, the better you will become at this. Now, if you found any of these methods helpful, you can go ahead and drop us a like. You can also leave a comment if you'd like to know more. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.